Today we will be discussing peptide tag and specifically we will discuss MYC tag, MYC tag. What is the role of this particular tag? What are the conditions when you use this particular tag? And how this tag is used for the purification of the protein? This is the topic. For this topic, you at least need to understand the basics of protein purification. So the topic is MYC tag. What is it? It's a small immunoreactive tag. So it, be, it is based on the antibody production against the specific antigen molecule. In this case, it's the small amino acid, which is 11 amino acid long peptide sequence. So it's a small amino acid sequence. It's a small uh, sequence stretch, which is also known as peptide. And this particular peptide sequence is immunogenic in nature so it is ideal for western blot you can directly do western blotting this is the beauty of this particular tag right you have antibodies that can basically bind to the recombinant protein another important aspect of this is the small tag it's a small amino acid tag up to 11 amino acids and and it is able to bind with the MYC monoclonal antibody. So you are using monoclonal antibody. So the purification will be super, super specific. That means you're going to get highly purified protein. In elution, elution is usually done by using low pH buffer. So low pH is known to reduce the affinity of the uh, monoclonal antibody against the antigen. So using that, you can elute the protein. And another point is you can incorporate this particular tag into the N terminus or the C terminus, depending upon the protein or the experiment you are trying to do. Uh, maybe your protein is is uh, going to be purified nicely if you have a histidine, uh, not the histidine tag, sorry, uh, is the MIC tag. So another tag that you use is the histidine tag. I have already made the video on that. We should watch that video. What are the system that you, you can use for MYC tag is bacteria, yeast, mammalian cells or insect cells. You can use MIC tag with all of these systems and it should work fine. So this is the small amino acid, 11 amino acid tag, and that you can incorporate into your gene. So how it, it is going to work? So diagrammatically, let me show you, you have the plasmid where the gene is there, and that particular gene has that amino acid sequence. What will happen once you do the transformation after transformation, the plasmid will be used to secrete the proteins. You have that particular tag, the protein will have the uh, the MIC tag, and then with, with that particular tag, you'll have also untagged proteins so you'll have tagged protein you'll have untagged protein that i'm showing you in the uh, in, in different boxes so this is the mixture of the protein now antibody binding with the specific antigen molecule is highly specific so let me draw the antibody i'm sure that all of you already know about the structure of the antibody and how antibody works basically they they form uh, they sorry they bind with uh, the specific antigenic molecule in this case, it's that peptide sequence, which is known as MCTAG. So here the MCTAG will bind and the protein will get trapped right in the column. So in the column, you have the slurry where you have that particular monoclonal antibody mobilized and it can hold up the protein. Now, if you change the pH, at particular pH, this binding will occur. If you decrease the pH, what will happen? The protein will be eluted. So this is how you're going to use this tag and using antibodies uh, you can purify the specific protein or the protein of interest. Now, what are the conditions that you use uh, using this uh, MIC tag? So one important condition is when you want a small tag in your protein, so you don't want to stress the system. Second, low metabolic pressure is needed. When the metabolic pressure is low, you want your bacterial system, yeast system or the mammalian system not to work too much. You can use this tag. Co-immunoprecipitation studies, if you are interested in doing the 
immunoprecipitation studies, you can do that. If you're interested in Western blotting, so you have the protein and you want to know that specific protein is there, you can directly do the Western blot. That is, uh, that is very, very unique for this particular tag. And third, ELISA flow cytometry, you can do everything with this particular protein because it has that particular tag and then it can detect. Another thing is it can also do the localization of the protein inside the cell. So suppose you have a cell and you transfect the cell with specific plasmid, a protein is getting synthesized, you can locate the position of the protein by using immunofluorescein straining, correct? So you have the protein, you have the antibody, you can do all the assay that protein antibody assays uh, are done. So one is basically the localization using immunofluorescein. So you can do that and you can visualize the protein where the protein is. So this is another important aspect that using secondary antibody detection, you can do the same because the primary antibody will detect the tag and the secondary antibody can detect the primary antibody. Based on this, you can localize the protein. So I think this was uh, this was all that I wanted to discuss about the MIG tag. Uh, in this particular video, we have discussed in general about the MIG tag, what is MIG tag, uh, what is the length of that particular tag. And we have also discussed that it is uh, basically the immunoreactive tag where the monoclonal antibodies are there against this particular uh, sequence of the peptide. And then uh, we have discussed that what are the systems that you can use? Bacteria, yeast, mammalian cell, insect cell, all these systems you can use. We have discussed how you can use bacteria and then purify the protein from the complex of the proteins using the antibody tag. Finally, Illusion. We have discussed that if you want to elute the protein, you can basically just change the pH and the protein will be eluted. Finally, we have discussed the condition when to use this tag. And we have discussed that if you want to use a smaller tag, just use this one. Another important aspect is you can do co-immunoprecipitation. You can do Western blot. You can do ELISA flow cytometry. You can do the localization inside the protein also. So these are some of the benefits. Now, if you are working with this tag, Obviously, if you're thinking about purifying protein in a large amount, this won't work. It will work, but the yield will be very, very low and the cost will shoot up. But in this in this uh, method, what you will get is highly purified protein. So if you are interested in highly purified protein, you want to do some uh, immuno antigenic assays, you want to raise antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, against uh, not monoclonal antibodies but you want to do uh, the immunological studies you want a specific protein you don't want anything interfering with that so you can use this particular uh, tag and purify the protein in high amount you can use this tag and find out the protein where the protein is what is the function how it is interacting with other molecules so there are various things you can do you can also understand the protein protein interaction inside the column with the slurry uh, so there are various assays you can do using this particular uh, system. So I think that was all that I wanted to discuss about the MIG tag. I'll, I'll bring more topics. I'll discuss more tags. And if you are, if you are enjoying these videos, then please uh, stay tuned and do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.